Hey, everybody. Thank y'all for joining. It's Monday night. I always do this call the last Monday of every month. Um, just for our precious team, I'm so thankful to have each of you, and I'm especially excited because tonight we have Holly Pickerel, and yes, if you go to Instagram and follow her and follow her page or her special, her business page, it's called Your Heart Centered Mentor, you will be so blessed because she really does share from her heart. She's authentic. Um, she's a real deal. She's a senior sales coordinator with Juice Plus, like me, and we met at an event sitting side by side. Allison was sitting on the other side in Nashville. It was so much fun, and Holly shared her heart, and I think we all got tears in our eyes, and just, I fell in love with her then. Can I say that? I fell in love with her. <laughs> you can say that. I fell in love with you, too. <laughs> yes. She loves Jesus. She loves her husband, her kiddos, her boys. She stays home with them. And she was a school teacher, just like me. Um, yeah, before having kids. And then she wanted to be home. So I'm glad she gets to be home with those boys and still have her online business, which is incredible. And not only does she work her Juice Plus business, but she has a business teaching us how to use social media to grow our business authentically from our heart and not salesy because none of us want to come across like that right so she's just such a a beautiful soul the real deal um and i'm excited she's here tonight and holly remind me what part of kentucky you live in i'm in glasgow so that's south central kentucky Okay, very cool. And we'll have to figure out if that's close to Barbara after Barbara eats her dinner. <laughs> yeah, it's not too far from me. That's awesome. Yeah, so I'm, where are you from, Barbara? I live in Meade County um, near Elizabethtown. Oh my gosh, yeah, we're like 45 minutes away from each other. I know, that's yeah, awesome. We're gonna have to grab coffee sometime or go go eat together. I, that would be wonderful. I, I would love to. Anytime, just let me know. Awesome. Yay, that's I'm so awesome. Country. <laughs> all right all right all right so we are going to get started i'm going to just let holly take it over um i told her sh to share from her heart because we all need encouragement inspiration and just want to get better oh i'm so excited to be with you guys okay before we get started i'm going to tell you you are going to need a journal or a notebook and something to write with okay does anybody need to grab one and the other, th okay, yay. The other thing I'm going to tell you is, you know, if, if there's any way to minimize distractions during our time together, like say, hubby, I need your help with the kids <laughs> or whatever, like get your dog out of the room, shut a door, whatever you need to do. Like, I just want you to be as minimally distracted as possible because this is your time for you. Like this is a divinely appointed time. And really my heart is just to be here for you guys because what we know is in Juice Plus, Juice plus and strategy is like 10% of what we do, right? It's 90% mindset, 90% <laughs> heart set. What you're dealing with in your heart and in your life and in your mind, especially spiritually, it's going to come out in your business too. So I really hope to dig into some of that. And my goal is to leave you all feeling empowered and 10 times more confident and with 10 times more permission to be yourself after tonight's call, because that's what my heart is. And that's what I bring about in people in my coaching business. So I'm going to share my screen with you guys. Oh, can you make me a host angel so I can share my screen? And I'm going to just share a little bit of my story. And um, I just hope to create safety for you all here. Um, angel loves you so much. I have heard all about you. <laughs> and I just, you all have such a dream team. You know, and just the synergy and the community that I even feel just being on this call is so incredible. It reminds me of my own team. <laughs> we would love, like my team would love to get together with this team. You guys are wonderful. So I'm going to share my screen with you guys real quick. Um, let's see. Okay. Can you all see my screen? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So authentic confidence. It is the magic attractor to success. It really is. When we think about attracting what's meant to come our way and what's meant for us, it all comes back to how true are you willing to show up? How genuine are you willing to be, right? Not what she does, not what he thinks you should be, not what mama thinks you should be, uh, but who, who does God need you to be? And the most confident version of yourself, that is really what attracts success. And I don't care what you do, whether that's in Juice Plus 
or in anything. So I'm going to share a little bit of my story with you. So this picture on the right is actually um, where I was when Juice Plus found me. Well, actually a little bit before this. So when I was pregnant with the baby sitting on my belly, <laughs> that's when Juice Plus found me. I uh, heard about Juice Plus, the products, when I was expecting my first child, which that's him uh, sitting on my second child in my belly, basically. And my OBGYN shared Juice Plus with me as the best prenatal nutrition I could take during pregnancy. I did not know much about nutrition at the time. I lived for a calorie in as a calorie out. I was a marathoner and a fitness instructor, and I looked physically fit as a fiddle, but I was nutritionally depleted. And so when she told me I could get fruits and vegetables in a capsule, and it meant I didn't have to take those horse pill prenatal vitamins, I was like, yes, sign me up for this, because I'd already read in Runner's World that I needed a lot more fruits and vegetables that I was getting. <laughs> so it must be true, right? Because Runner's World magazine said so. So I started taking Juice Plus and fell in love with it very quickly, wanted to get on board with more of the products. I had the best representative, you guys. It was the team teacher that I taught with. She was um, my fourth grade uh, teaching partner. And uh, see, it was my OBGYN who recommended it to me, but it was actually my teaching partner who I got signed up with. So just keep in mind, relationships are everything relationships or everything. I had a relationship with her and she had also had a story that resonated with me. And so she just kept sharing things with me. She kept sharing the shakes. She kept sharing the bars. She told me about the tower garden and it made sense for me to join as a representative because I kept talking to people about it. So I didn't want to do a whole lot with the business. Now keep in mind, I was a mama. I had lots on my plate. I had a full-time teaching job, but getting to the well, it's now the QSC position, getting to that second position, uh, which Julie, I love that you're here and that you're brand new. You'll probably be at this position in no time. Um, this QSC position made so much sense to me because she told me that at that position, that was the best place to be if I wanted to start consistently earning a paycheck that could pay for my family products. Like that was the minimum of where I needed to be. So I was like, okay, let's do it. So we hit our first couple of promotions in the first 60 days, had some in-home events. I loved it. But I really didn't want a whole lot more to do with the business at that point. Um, I had so much on my plate. I wasn't looking to start a business. And that has been the journey of my business story over the past six years. <laughs> I it was always God saying, I'm going to give this to you. And you're not going to know you need it now, but you're going to need it one day. And so around this time, the photo that you see here, when I found out I was expecting baby number two and baby number one was still a baby himself, I decided that that little whisper of maybe I don't want to be a teacher for the rest of my life, uh, it turned into a roar because I not only was not really wanting to be a teacher the rest of my life, I really didn't want to have to take two babies to someone else every day. Some mamas do. I just didn't. Uh, I wanted to be there. And so I came home um, to really focus on being a mom and a wife in that season. Uh, you know, the beautiful thing about the business was that when I decided that I wanted for it to pay for our mortgage, it did. When I decided that I wanted it to send us on the vacations we'd always taken um, with my teaching income, we always went to the beach on fall break. Uh, we did not miss a single fall break vacation because of my Juice Plus business, even though I wasn't doing a lot with it. Uh, the place that I did the most of my business with was social media. Um, I built Shred 10 groups, and I'm telling you, Shred 10 got us all the way to senior sales coordinator. I was just sharing and building relationships online, not really knowing what I was doing, but building a brand while I went. <laughs> so social media has been a huge part of my journey. You know, the beautiful thing is not only did we unintentionally um, see Juice Plus keep me home with my family and create this amazing income that gave us options. So we never skipped a beat when my teaching income was gone. The beautiful thing about the business is that it gave us the gift of time because God always knew was about to, what was about to go down in our marriage. And when I came home in that season, my husband and I, who'd been high school sweethearts, we really realized that we hadn't turned toward each other. We turned away from each other for many years. And until I came home and slowed down a little bit, we didn't realize it. So my Juice Plus business didn't just pay for our mortgage. It paid for our marriage counseling. It didn't just give me time with my babies. It gave me time for day dates and time to talk to my husband, time to learn his love language, time to be loved by him. Um, it gave us both time to turn towards each other and, and to offer forgiveness in ways that we never thought we would ever have to have, right? Don't, have you ever been through something in your life that you think you're never going to have to go through? 
um, that's really where we were. And by the grace of God, he allowed us to walk through that together. I know that staying together through hardship is not God's plan for every family, but it was the plan for our family. And I'm so thankful that it got to be, you know, it takes two people working together to make things work. And I never want to take for granted the fact that my husband was willing to work with me. But without the gift of time, I don't know where we would be today. And that was the biggest gift that our business brought us. And, you know, the greatest gift of all of that is what our kids got to see and be a part of because of what we went through together. Um, our kids have been the greatest recipient of us really fighting through that season and emerging victorious. And we've been able to walk with a lot of other couples who have faced similar stories of addiction and betrayal and infidelity um, as we have. And it's been a beautiful ministry that while we never would have asked for it when we first got married straight out of college, um, God needs stories like ours to provide hope <laughs> to people who are going through hard times and we're so better for it. So all the while we're building this Juice Plus business, we're so thankful for these amazing products that give us energy and life and some positive ministry to pour into people for the time freedom the business has brought us and certainly the income. Uh, what I didn't tell you is I actually retired from teaching at 29. That first year I came home uh, for FMLA leave, I never went back. <laughs> I was supposed to be home for a year and I ended up cashing out and reinvesting um, my retirement. I guess Kentucky retirement system, it was something not to be trusted there for a few years, um, a few years later, and people couldn't believe it. They were like, you're not going back to teaching. And I was like, no, I'm not. They finally stopped asking six years later. So I had no idea during the season of 2020 that so many business owners would have to close their doors and go online. But in that season, um, I actually had a couple of business owners um, reach out and ask if I would be willing to offer coaching for them because they had seen the success that I had had on social media and, you know, had really seen what I had done in terms of marketing. And they actually reached out if I would be and to see if I would be willing to coach them. And that was the beginning of something that I never knew was going to happen. Um, a second business, Holly Pickerel Coaching, that emerged into courses, mini courses and, um, you know, longer courses and one-on-one -on -one coaching that has really grown and thrived this year. We're opening Holly Pickerel Coaching LLC and have so many great things in the works on top of my Juice Plus business. Um, in the past three months, I have more than doubled my income that I create online because of the second business opportunity. Um, and I'm telling you, it's like when you trust God, <laughs> he will lead you in the right direction. But none of what I'm doing in my coaching business that is thriving so much would be possible without the skills that my Juice Plus direct sales business taught me. Because in Juice Plus, when you build a business online, you learn marketing, you learn how to talk to people, you learn sales skills, you learn how to build for events, you learn how to invite, you learn how to get over your dang self, <laughs> you learn how to embrace an entrepreneur's mindset. You learn how to dig into your authentic truth and how to let go of what people think of you. And none of this would have been possible for me in my coaching business had my Juice Plus business not taught me that first. So when I say that Juice Plus was so much more than a paycheck for me, I mean it. <laughs> so I wonder, what is your Juice Plus business preparing you for? Whether it's an income-related activity or like us, it was preparing us to survive a really hard season of, of marriage. Um, so with that, really my goal tonight, now that I've shared my story with you, is just to give you a really safe place tonight to be seen and to be fully accepted for who you are. When change takes place, change takes place in a safe environment. And the safest environment that you have to create is within your own heart and mind. Do we have any, um, anybody critical of themselves here on this call? If you are self-critical, I just want you to type in the chat, you're talking to me. <laughs> If you beat yourself up, I want to hear from you. Oh, anybody got any negative Nancys in their head some days? I know I sure do. Oh, I see the chat lighting up already. Yes. So as you create a safe place in your own heart and mind, that's where change takes place. So it's not just to be seen and accepted for who you are, but it's to remember who you are and what you're capable of, according to 2 Timothy 1.7, which we're going to dig into tonight. So before I get started, I just want to, I want us to look at this together. So when you think about your Juice Plus business, and I know, Julie, you're so new, so some of this may seem like I'm talking a foreign language to you or to anybody else who's new, but just know building a business is really, really simple, okay? What we do is we build relationships, we network and meet new people, we share our opportunity, we follow up with people because people forget and they need reminders. 
we create customers and team, we care for our customers and team, and then we teach our team to do the same. And we wash, we rinse, and we repeat. I could have added, we, we plug into and create positive culture too. But if it were this simple, we would all be at the top of the marketing plan, right? <laughs> Here's where it gets challenging. The list and the to-dos and the strategies is easy. Anybody can do this. It's usually what's going on in our head and our heart that makes things a little challenging. So before we get started, I just want to take some time and I want to bring you kind of out of your head and into your body. So remember how I told you I wanted you to go somewhere? Oh, hi, there's more people on the call. I'm so happy to see you. Remember how I told you I wanted you to get somewhere where you could be like super undistracted, um, like maybe just by yourself? Okay, you're about to see why. <laughs> when you can get out of your head, I'm thinking and spinning and wheeling and when you can get into your heart, which is really what I'm all about helping people to do, you can get into your body and bring your feelings into it a little bit. We try to shut those down sometimes or sometimes we're afraid of our feelings. Um, it's amazing what can happen. So I'm just going to invite you to take a minute and get grounded with me. Has anybody ever done a grounding exercise? Oh, yes. If you're if you're in yoga, you know all about this. Um, okay. And, and in just a minute, I'm going to pray for you guys too. So I want to just invite you, go ahead and get really comfortable. I want you to take your hands, put your hand on your heart. I would invite you to put one hand on your heart, one hand on your belly. So like right below your belly button. Okay. Go ahead. You can close your eyes. So nobody's going to be looking at you. I promise. I've even got my eyes closed. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and take a minute, get out of our head, get into our body. I want you to go ahead and take a big, deep breath. And exhale it out. Big deep breath in your nose. Exhale out your mouth. Now I'm going to invite you to continue that at your own pace. Inhale in your nose. Exhale in your mouth. You're going to keep breathing. As you're breathing, I want you to think about pulling breath through your esophagus, past your chest, into your belly. So with the next breath, I want you to feel your stomach rise and fall. So deeper breath and just pulling it into your chest, giving that panting feeling. I want you to pull it deep into your diaphragm. Big inhale in, exhale out. While you're breathing in, I want to remind you, you are safe. You are seen. And all of you is welcome here. And when I say all of you is welcome here, I mean, even the parts that you don't feel comfortable bringing to the table. Maybe the parts that you're a little insecure about. Maybe the parts that you are embarrassed of. Maybe the parts that you're sure you have to keep hidden. Because if anyone knew, or if people knew you thought that way or felt that way, they surely know you were an imposter. As you're breathing in and breathing out, I want to remind you that all of you is welcome here because authenticity means accepting all the parts of yourself, all the pieces that make the whole. And even if not all those pieces need to be put on full display, because while transparency is never required without discretion, you owning that, being willing to see that in yourself and to accept that it's okay, makes a big difference in the way that you show up and in what you allow to be brought into your life. So I want you to keep pulling breath in your nose. Exhale through your mouth. Pull it in your nose. Exhale through your mouth. And I'm just going to invite you to say a quick prayer with me. Father God, we just thank you so much. God, thank you so much for this team and for the connection and the synergy that I already feel between them. God, we want to thank you for bringing us together tonight. God, I just pray that you would richly encourage each woman on this call. God, I pray that you would remind each person that she is important and that she matters and that she has a voice and she has a story, a story that's so much bigger than just for her Juice Plus business. God, I pray that you would remind her that all of her is welcome here and in every day. God, I pray that in this time, you would allow each woman here to look within, to ask hard questions, and to be willing to be honest with themselves. Because if we want to move forward, we have to be really honest with where we are. God, we thank you. We praise you. We ask that you will bless our time together. 
God, we know that you take business and relationships so seriously. God, there's ministry to be found in fruits and vegetables. There's ministry to be found in this team. God, I just pray that you bless our time together and bless each person here. It's in your name. I got my words. Amen. Okay. Hope you got your journal. Okay. So get your journal out. <laughs> so we're going to go back to where I was. So we, we were talking about how this, right? This is where we landed. But certainly, as you're looking at each of these steps, you're probably looking at one and you're thinking, oh boy, I have a hiccup with that one. <laughs> Anybody have a hiccup with follow up? Anybody have a hiccup with follow-up? Anybody got any, uh, you know, scary stories running through your mind whenever it's time to follow up? I'm just curious, would one of you be willing to share where do you have hiccups in these steps? And when I say a hiccup, where does your mind go, boo, <laughs> when you go to do it? Or eh, you can't do that. Would anybody be willing to unmute themselves and share? I am very patient. So, um, I have, I know I'm new to Juice Plus, but I've tried multi-level marketing, well, you know, five different times. Uh -huh. My hang up is share my opportunity. That's mm -hmm. where I get stuck. Uh -huh. Julie, thank you so much for sharing that. Is it like before you go to share or in the middle of it or just won't, you're too hesitant? I'm too hesitant. I, I don't want to impose on people. I don't want to, you know, um, I guess just have people think ah, she's doing that MLM thing again. Yeah. So. Julie, thank you for being honest. If you can relate to Julie, I want you to type in the chat and I want you to say me too, Julie. If that's now or if you've been there in the past, because Julie, you're not alone in that. And even myself and I'm sure even Angel have been there. I think all of us have. So the fact that you're willing to be honest about that is the first step to moving forward. Look at all that. That's beautiful. Yeah. Anybody else have a hiccup here? I do, and it's the same as Julie. It's sharing the opportunity. I get, I get scared, and I don't even want to share it. I'm like, oh, I'm not the leader that they're looking for. I can't, I can't help them in that um, area. But I'm slowly but surely getting over that because I know in order to grow the team that I have to share the opportunity because I can't do it by myself. So, mm, girl, what are you doing it? <laughs> We see you. If you can relate to what she just said, I want you to type in the chat. I've been there. I'm, it sounds like you're talking about imposter syndrome. Yeah, you're very, very seen in that, sister. Um, that's a very, very real thing. It's like self-sabotage. You know, it's crazy because the enemy, he doesn't just want to provoke us to sin. He wants to keep us defeated and discouraged. So we're quiet. <laughs> so the fact that look at all that, look at all that. Not a single one of you, not a single one of you is dealing with something in that list that someone else on this team isn't already dealing with. And I hope you remember that because uh, sometimes it's really easy to be discouraged and to think that you're all alone in that. But there's so much strength in community in sharing with Angel and then even being willing to share within your, your group. So yeah, yeah, I get it. We're gonna go on and we're gonna talk a little bit about authenticity and about confidence. Um, but you are so seen in all of this. Just remember, mindset and heart set is the biggest piece behind this. So we're gonna dig into a couple of things here. So authenticity, you know, authenticity is the daily practice of letting go of who we think we are supposed to be and embracing who we are. Anybody love some Brene Brown? <laughs> I sure do love Brene Brown. You know, when it comes to authenticity, for a long time, I really thought I had to be somebody that I wasn't. Um, and, and if you can relate to me and make me feel seen, I need you to say, I get you, Holly, in the chat. <laughs> because I was like, oh, she is a national marketing director and there's her speech. Oh, she said she did this. Oh, that's what I have to do to get a national marketing director. I would be just like her. <laughs> or, oh, she did salad in the jars every Sunday for eight weeks in a row. That's the ticket. I'm going to do that. What she did is what I need to do. Oh, she creates social media just like this. Oh, my goodness. I need to do that, too. Right? So, authenticity. You know, when you are able to let go of who you think you're supposed to be and embrace who you are, that's attractive. People open up to that. 
And when you're able to accept who you are, flaws and all, fears and all, uh, being willing to, to open the door to share, even without knowing what the outcome is going to be, that's really the secret. So I'm going to invite you to get your journal out. And I'm going to invite you to take just a couple of minutes. And I want you to journal this. Where in your life or business are you showing up as something you're supposed to be, but you know deep down in your heart that isn't really in alignment with who you are? And I'm going to share a story while you're thinking about this. So when I first got started, um, my upline national marketing director is phenomenal. I mean, she's just, she's just the stuff of dreams. She is a registered dietitian. She is extremely well-spoken. She is very professional, extremely professional, all business. Golly, that woman has a poker face. You never know what she's thinking. <laughs> and it's just so impressive. And I remember, I just, I talked like her. I used her words. I did everything just like her. Because I forgot that you duplicate the activity, right? The share with people, the customer care, invite people to look at your opportunity. You duplicate the activity, but you don't try to duplicate other people because that's the opposite of what authenticity is. So when I realized that I wasn't supposed to talk on the phone like a business professional <laughs> because I'm just Holly and I'm feely and touchy and lovey and I'm going to love you up. Um, and when I realized that, you know, she's known as the velvet hammer, but I am far from the velvet hammer. I'm like a puddle of mush. Uh, and when I realized that that was okay and it was how I was supposed to show up, made all the difference in the world because I wasn't creating this resistance. Um, you know, back in 2016, before most people in our business were really doing social media the way that I am, I remember I was getting on and doing Insta stories and sharing my face to camera. People thought I was really weird. <laughs> there were even some people in our business, some really well-meaning mentors who told me that they thought I was wasting my time with that. But the reality is, is all my customers were coming from that all the time, <laughs> even more so than like inviting to my house and inviting to events. Um, and I remember I had to let go of the fact that I had to build my business in the exact same way that some of the mentors around me had. So I wonder where in your life are you showing up as something that you're supposed to be, but maybe re isn't really in alignment with who you are? Have you thought of anything yet? I'm going to give you about a couple more minutes to journal this out. It's like, you know, when you're out of alignment, you can feel it in your gut. It's like, oh man, I'm doing, I don't really want to do that. And it's not just a matter of discipline. It's a matter of like, that's really not me, you know? So where in your life or business are you showing up in that way? Just feels off. I'm going to give you about a minute and a half. To break the silence We're running away from the dark Praying our lungs I'm going to ask you just to wrap up a little bit of where you are, and I'm going to invite you to screenshot this later on. That way you can finish this later. This is an awesome journaling activity to start your day with or to set some intention for your life. When you think about authenticity, you know, it's really a practice. Brene Brown also says that authenticity is really the choice to show up and be real, even when you aren't sure that it's going to be accepted or how people are going to see it. 
It's the choice to be honest, the choice to let your true self be seen. So I wonder, as a second question, I would ask you to journal, where would you like to embrace who you are even more? Where are some areas of your life, in your business or your life, that you realize, hmm, I'm not really allowing myself to show up and be who I really am in that place. And I'm going to share a story while you start writing this. So for me, um, I really struggled with this at church. Um, I was raised in a church, or not raised in a church, but I, I went to a church and we were in a small group with women who, um, they were all stay-at-home moms. And so when I came home from teaching, it was almost like I was accepted into this fold and I, I, like everything just fit. So then when I started my Juice Plus business, um, it was almost something that I was afraid to be seen in because they didn't have home-based businesses and they had said some things that, you know, made me feel like they didn't really approve of things like that. Like, oh, how do you have time to take care of your small children and do that? You know, just some judgmental remarks that really weren't mine to bear the weight of. And so I really hid a big part of who I was at that time. I watered down who I was and I even watered down my social media content because I wanted them to approve of me. Um, I wanted to make them happy with my content instead of really serving the people who I was meant to serve. And, you know, it's so interesting because as I chose to overcome that, um, they not only respected it, but many of them decided to join me in the business. Um, but until I was willing to show up and be authentic and admit, hey, I love money. So does, you know, God has a plan for when you want to create money. And if there's any negative thought in your head about um, the beauty that can come from making and earning money and what you can do with it, um, that's on you, but that's not going to keep me quiet. And it's interesting because as I started opening up about that and having more conversations, lots of those women came around. Um, and that's just really one example. But where would you like to embrace who you are even more. I've always felt like I was too much in a world of meek and quiet women. I've been surrounded by meek and quiet women my whole life. Angels like me. Some of y'all must be able to see that. Uh, likewise, I have a friend who, you know, she feels like she's not enough in a world full of outgoing and uh, you know, unafraid to speak women. And um, so allowing myself to be seen in that was really the magic attractor to start attracting the people and the circumstances that God had for me. So take about a minute and a half and I want you to journal about this. And then we're going to go on a little bit. Okay, I'm going to ask you guys to go ahead and stop. If you want to take a picture of this really quick to say for the future, go ahead and snap that really quick. We're going to move on to confidence. But here's the beautiful thing about authenticity. The truer you are to you, the more in alignment you're going to attract the people, the circumstances, and the places that are meant for you. That also means you're going to repel and you're not going to attract what's not meant for you. You ever been in a season where you end up surrounded by people or environments or situations and you're just like, how did I get here? <laughs> and you can look around and realize, oh man, it's because I was saying yes to things I shouldn't have been saying yes to. Woo, do we have any people pleasers on this call? <laughs> when you say yes to things that are not authentically in line, aligned with who you are, that's where you're going to land. Absolutely. Okay, confidence. Let's talk about this a little bit. Confidence. Confidence is the feeling that you can trust and be sure about the abilities or qualities of somebody or something, right? So when you have self-confidence in yourself, that means you can be sure 
about yourself. So that reflects that you realize that the God in you has given you a, a spirit, not a spirit of fear, but a power and of love and of sound mind. Um, confidence is usually one of the number one reasons why we don't show up in the way that we know we need to both online and in person and in our business. Confidence, especially for women of faith, is sometimes confusing because we confuse confidence with um, arrogance or pride. And that's not the case at all. Confidence is not walking into a room thinking you're better than everyone. It's walking in and not having to compare yourself to anyone at all because you're not thinking about yourself. Confidence is knowing this is good. This is like all of this. This is good. I'm good. So I don't have to think about it. So I can walk into a room and I can just look at you and I can think all about you. Because I don't have to worry that any of this isn't enough or is too much. Confidence is the beautiful ability to think highly enough of yourself so that you think less of yourself and more of others. It's beautiful. So I want to ask you, when are you unsure of yourself in your life and in your business? When are you unsure of yourself in your life and in your business? And I want you to journal that. You know, for me, I um, used to be so unsure of myself in life and business um, because I, I just, oh gosh, I was just, I was just so unsure of myself. Um, I was unsure about, um, you know, just opening the door to new things, opening the door to new places because I felt like I had to go in perfect. Or had to go in with a plan instead of just winging it with who I am. Um, was very unsure of myself as a leader um, because I thought, how can I lead a team when I don't feel like I have enough experience? Or how can I lead a team when I can't do it the way Angel does it? Or in my case, my sponsor. Like I don't have the, I don't have it memorized. When are you unsure of yourself in your life and your business? Do you have specific times? Second question. Where would you like to embrace more power, love, and sound mind? You know, this verse is so beautiful because it's literally there to remind you in those moments of catching yourself in the stinking thinking, you know, like Julie was talking about, um, several people were talking about having trouble sharing the products. Um, you know, when it's when we confuse the fact that we have to be anything to share and just realize we just have to be the vessel. We just have to give them the opportunity. Um, it's the ability to say, oh, I'm so afraid right now, but Jesus, you give me power, love, and you give me a sound mind. So I'm going to dwell on that Philippians 4, 8 truth. And I'm going to think about what's honorable, what's truthful, what's praiseworthy. Will you work that out in me? Um, and when you feel afraid, you know, letting yourself feel afraid for a minute and then getting it out. Where would you like to embrace more of that? So while you're writing, and I know that normally I asked Angel if we could have a little bit more time, but one of the things that, um, that I love to do the most with clients is to help coach clients through blocks, help clients, help clients self-coach their way through what's holding them back. And I'm sure some of these four questions have brought some areas into your life that you feel like you're held back in regarding your authenticity, regarding your confidence. I'm just curious, but would any of you all appreciate the opportunity to work through some things together? Because with your permission, I would love to offer some, some coaching right now. Anybody have anything that came up for them that they want to share? They want to get some help through. Brandy. <laughs> I'm like literally almost in tears right now. Oh, girl. <laughs> and I'm a coach. Oh, I love it. I get you. I connect with you. This is why we're coaches, right? Like it, it, yes. it's it comes from here. It comes down deep. But I think for me is, you know, I spend a lot of time putting myself out on social media. And so it's not that I don't have confidence. It's not that I don't care if I make a fool of myself and if people judge me, but when I put it out there and I don't get anything back or I only get things back from my team members or 
Like there are people that see me and people that I reach out to like, oh, I see you've been watching my story for the last few months. Like, you know, what's going, you know, hey, how are you? Haven't talked to you in a long time because for the most part, there are people that I know from my past job, which was 20 years in health and wellness. And my coaching clients right now are people that I knew from that particular job and that client that I had. Mm -hmm. So I think what I struggle with is crickets. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So Brandy, do I have permission to ask you some questions? A hundred percent. So do I have permission to come into your space? Yes. Okay. If we were together, I would probably have my hands on you right now. If you're okay with that. <laughs> because again, yes. touchy, touchy puddle of mess here. So Brandy, have you always struggled with trusting the process of things? Right now, where I am in my journey, and what you don't know about me, Holly, is that I literally, three months ago, gave up my life in Nashville to move to the country, <laughs> leave everything, friends and my son and everything, to come to the country because I knew that God had a plan for me. Mm -hmm. So maybe prior to the last eight months of my life, maybe I did, even though I, I, I feel like I always was like, you know, everything happens for a reason, mm -hmm. but it wasn't until a couple of years ago mm -hmm. when I had a divorce and I lost my dad to suicide and I lost my job of 20 years after that, that like the rug was pulled out from under me and I had no choice but to actually mm. really trust God. Yeah. So I, I've always felt like everything happens for a reason, but like just over the last three years, trusting mm -hmm. the process. Mm -hmm. So you're learning to lean into trusting the process a little more. So when you go back to what you said about the crickets, Tell me more about like you create and then there's, you post all the time, you're confident, but then you hear crickets. Tell me more about that. So when I post about mm -hmm. my tower garden, mm -hmm. which today was amazing. Angel and I mm -hmm. presented to the world about tower garden. That made mm -hmm. me feel like mm -hmm. so energetic. But um, when I post about losing my dad to suicide, like mm -hmm. people are all over it. But when I post about eating more fruits and veggies in their diet mm -hmm. and a simple solution and um, I definitely want, I'll, I'll have crickets a lot. And I know people are watching and people are liking and I'm not having a lot of comments, but um, it's just like, oh, well they connect to loss and they connect when I'm down but are they connecting when I'm somebody they should trust because they've been watching me on social media for 10 or 15 years, or they know me from my past job. Mm -hmm. um, but yet I'm only getting that connection, that mm -hmm. heart connection from that piece. And I'm, I'm trying to build my platform as mental health. And within that mental health space, which is heart, our team heart, from that mental health space, there is nutrition, there's fitness, there's self-care, there's all of these things that I'm trying to build my platform on that mm -hmm. all, you know, Juice Plus is a part of it and my yeah. past is a part of it. So I think the disappointment comes from when I'm showing the good stuff, I'm not getting as much interaction mm -hmm. versus showing the bad stuff. I love this. So Brandy, I think you already identified so much in what you just said. So think about it. When you share about your, the loss and the suicide that comes from an emotional place, right? Like you said, it comes from a heart place. And since you're a heart centered person, how can you, I think the answer is going to be found in like, how can you create more emotion and how can you speak to the emotions behind why people need more fruits and vegetables? How can you make that a heart thing too? You know, yeah. like, are you, are you, um, 
Are you regularly speaking to the emotions behind fruit and vegetable consumption? Because the reality is with marketing, you know, people are curious about what will save them time, money, and energy. And when we can present these things to them in a way that shows that it will save them time, energy, energy, time, (laughs) money, or energy, or that it will boost some positive emotion or that it will take away some negative emotion, they're all ears. (laughs) They're all ears. So I wonder if you leaned into the emotion a little bit more, if you might have more of a response. Well, and Holly, can I jump in? I'm, um, Brandy lives with me. I'm I'm married to her dad. Uh And um, what she said really resonated with me because I've had the same experience. Yeah. A lot of people, when I talk about uh, being a suicide widow and what that means, they, it's almost like they feel empowered. This is going to sound horrible, but like they are reaching out to me because it's something they feel good about doing as opposed when I'm the one who's empowered on the other end with the fruits and vegetables, Mm -hmm. they don't receive it. And I don't know if it's because they're so focused on reaching out to others to make them feel good that they are not in that place you know, Mm -hmm. making that paradigm shift of, oh, well, Elizabeth's not so needy anymore. She's actually an expert in this realm because Mm -hmm. it paints the mental health. Can you share some insight? And I feel like that is the same thing Brandy's been going through too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I totally get it. There's, with social media, you're always going to have more of an organic reach out when, when you're speaking to people's emotions. So the fact that you're getting so much from comments and posts like this, same thing for me, when I share about our marriage journey, um, or I share about stories that are, you know, heartfelt within our family. I mean, same thing, way more engagement on that. Um, but I think the reality is, is as you're sprinkling these other things in, the people who are engaging, they're still seeing. And there's a couple of things that I can share with you guys with your content surrounding Juice Plus that might help you. Okay. So you should be creating really three types of content for your fruits and vegetable stuff, okay? So when you think about what you share, you want to talk to both your hot, your warm, and your cold market, okay? I don't know if any of this is making sense to you guys, but if you can start rotating three types of content for Juice Plus and fruit and vegetable consumption, it's probably going to make a big difference, okay? So number one, your cold market needs to see what this can do for them, okay? So they need to hear the positive stories, of you, especially tied to the emotion. How did you feel before Juice Plus versus how you feel now? Um, You know, you went from confused uh, to clarity. You went from uh, struggling to simple solutions. You went from worried and fearful about your future to confident because you have a simple nutritional bullet. And not just that, but what customer stories do you have that with permission you could share? So just like Brandy, you got Angel on to talk about the Tower Garden. That's wonderful because that's giving your viewers another perspective of someone who's had a great Tower Garden experience. And I'm not for sure what she shared. But, um, you know, I ask my customers all the time as I'm communicating with them through text, like, hey, what are you loving about your Omega blend? Oh, my goodness, your hair's longer. Oh, this. Tell me about how you're feeling. Great. And then with their permission, hey, would you be okay if I shared this with people? Um, maybe on my stories and saved it to a a customer wins highlight uh, to bless and encourage people. Great. I would even take your name and photo off of it if you didn't want me to. Awesome. And they're always like, yes. So your cold market, they need to see those wins and those testimonials, specifically how it makes people feel. Your warm market. So these are the people who already like, know, and trust you. Your warm market, they need to hear tips, hacks, and helpful suggestions. Um, We got to be careful here, though, because I think a lot of us live here (laughs) because we're like, let's teach how to do something. Um, But when you can communicate, hey, I have this new easy recipe. I'm totally going to change your morning. Here's what it is. And it uses complete or whatever. Or, you know, whatever your ideal client needs for you. If you're focusing on mental health, um, you know, maybe maybe your tips are 
I don't know. I mean, there's so many things for mental health that you can talk about how to nourish your mood. You could uh, talk about the omega blend and how you could find omegas in other types of foods. Um, there's so many things. But then your hot market, these are the people who they could be ready to purchase from you any day. Like you would not be surprised if they sent you a message and said, hey, sign me up. They're like the people who maybe come to your events. They like your stuff. And you may not have those people on social media, but you still need to talk to them as though they're there because you're going to train people to become hot market and you want hot market people. So your hot market, they need to hear that you're credible. They need to hear that you can answer their questions. They need to hear that you can answer their objections. You know, I am not afraid to talk about the reasons why people don't get started with things. Like I, I talked about auto ship one time on my stories and I had two people that signed up because they, they weren't signing up because they were afraid of auto ship. <laughs> and because I talked about it, um, they were like, oh my gosh, I didn't realize Juice Plus wasn't one of those things that you sign up and you get like, you know, a year's worth of product <laughs> that you didn't want. And I was like, no, it's not that, um, you know. Um, but in all of that, when you speak to the emotion, you know, hey, I know you've been worried about auto ship. I, I, I want to know, I want you to know I get that because yes, not all companies do it great. Our company does do it great. And here's how I can show you that. I literally talked about that in my stories one time. And that was the story that ended up with two people who got started. And so I think the other thing I can tell you too, is whenever you're creating this content, um, so that's some strategy stuff you can do, but some heart set mindset stuff is to literally get your person in mind whenever you create it. Literally think about that person and also trust and know that because that energy is going to come through. You're going to be more confident, more passionate, but also trust and know that if a lot of the people are there and they're there for emotional reasons and they're drawn to your story and, you know, things that you've been through surrounding loss, it's only going to be a small percentage of those people who are going to be interested in Juice Plus usually. You know what I mean? Like that's a smaller niche. So I think expecting that not everybody is going to have the same response to that as they are a more emotional heart driven thing is really just normal, you know, because not everybody is there um to hear about your products but because you post about your lifestyle so beautifully those people are going to be exposed to that in time so like just really having the, that clear expectation of like hey it's okay if i have story drop-offs or it's okay if not everybody comments or likes that um that is part of being a business owner online when you're an influencer online influencers the way they show up sure they get the likes the engagement the everybody loves their stuff but as a business owner we're not looking to work with everyone we're looking to work with a very specific type of person you know i mean sure everybody needs juice plus but not everybody's going to come to the table um, looking for that so i don't know if that helps or encourages you guys at all or not but i mean you're doing a great job and i love that you're on social media sharing about something so important like loss and mental health and our products really weave perfectly into that. Don't be discouraged if you haven't seen it yet. Thank you. That was like so helpful for the both of us. Yeah. I'm yeah. so glad. We're I'm so glad. we together mm -hmm. and, you know, it, it's definitely hard sometimes to be vulnerable and like yeah. really put it out there. And, <laughs> you know, it, it's, it's all about connecting the dots. And yes. so what I learned from you is to connect more to the emotional piece of it versus yes. like with my background being in health and wellness, it's about the facts. Like, duh, people, mm -hmm. you need to be having more fruits and yeah. veggies. And this is why, like here's X, Y, Z, and Y. So that's where okay. that's been helpful for me mm -hmm. is to mm -hmm. get more into the emotional piece of it and then make right. sure that I'm connecting it back to the mental health piece of it. Because at the end of the day, that's where God has led us. Mm -hmm. to be here together and let us to do this ministry together and let us to be team, team members with mm -hmm. not only our juice puffs business but our tower gardens tower yeah gardens. and you know for us to be talking about authenticity and confidence like what better thing for you all to shine authentically in than talking about things like emotions and wow. the heart piece behind what we do and the mental health, you know, like I can't imagine that there would be any way that you'd be more authentic and confident than in talking about those things. Angel, I know I have had people for a while. Do I have time to keep going or do we need to let people go? Do y'all have another call? 
I have a quick question. Or Go for it, Barbara. So um, I'm a holistic nutritionist and a fitness um, instructor and known for that. So a lot of people will ask me questions. So my stop is, you know, I'll talk to them, I share with them, and then I want to go into Juice Plus. I'm like, well, I don't want them to think I'm just talking to them because I want to sell them something. Yeah. I had that today. I had a new lady in my class, and she started talking about the multivitamins she was taking and stuff. And I was like, okay, here's, a, here's an end. So I started talking about that and explaining. Um, and I almost just didn't even say a word about Juice Plus, but I finally did. Yeah. But that's a real struggle because I don't want people to think, well, she's only interested in what I'm saying because she wants to push this product. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's one of my biggest struggles is. Yeah. is Barbara, you know. that's beautiful because it shows that you care. You care about how people feel and you're very perceptive too. Um, so the thing that I can encourage you with is in your conversation, can you ask questions to, to qualify them first? So I love to qualify people before I insert it. Like I will almost like I will ask as many questions as needed to feel like I have a qualification to share with them. So maybe if you, you know, little things, I know Debbie Walton is like the queen of this, um, you know, hey, what do you have like? do you have any like nutritional goals here or if they're struggling with something in their health, have you tried anything nutritional for that? Or, you know, and you're going to hear so many things. You're going to hear people say things that aren't even nutritional and you're like, Oh dear Lord, they need juice plus, <laughs> you know, or you're going to hear like the silliest things in the world. Um, and then, you know, you listen, what well, did that work for you? How long have you been doing that? Okay. Okay. Well, you know, I heard, and they're going to tell you something that's going to give you a reason to bring Juice Plus in. Maybe they tried something and it stunk, it didn't work, they weren't happy with it, or they hadn't tried anything nutritional at all, or they're, they're just really health-minded and they're open to nutrition, you know, and so then maybe you might be able to say, well, I heard you say blah de blah de blah and say exactly what they say. Well, I heard you say you, well, I heard, I heard you say, it sounds like maybe you haven't had a lot of luck with nutrition so far. I wonder if you'd be open to take a look at what I do because I have had great success with it. And you just leave it at that. Well, yeah, what is it, you know? Or well, I heard you say, well, from what I've heard you say, it sounds like you're a real health nut. I love that. That is awesome. You would love what I do. Would you be open to, to taking a look at it? You know, like it doesn't matter what they say, you can bring it in and some, I heard you say, <laughs> and I do that with the business too. Does I that help? It. Yes, I love that. That's, that's great. That's yeah, exactly what I need to do. You're qualifying them first. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. You are so welcome. That was an awesome question. Anything else? I was going to say, Holly, I love that you ask permission before you just, you know, give people information because I'm kind of the opposite. I just want to tell them everything they need <laughs> and I can scare people off. And I learned over time that it is so good to ask permission. You know, I hear you say this. I've got something I love. Are you open to learning? Yeah. Are you open? Are you yes. Open? Are you open to learning? I love that. I have so enjoyed being with you guys tonight. I wish I could be on longer. I wish we could dive in deeper. I think my biggest goal is for you all to number one, feel seen and accepted and the things that you feel like are holding you back. <laughs> because the reality is every one of us has things here that could be uh, limiting beliefs if we chose to let them be. Um, and there's power in the community of that. But also to remember that, you know, the Lord's given you, um, confidence and power over fear and he, he gives you that spirit of power love and of a sound mind and that's available to you at any time the other thing that I want to encourage you with is my goodness your team leader Angel loves you so much I mean she I just can't think of anybody better to walk with uh, than her you know at leading the way in this and so one thing that I know from, from what I've seen of her behind the scenes is her heart for people and how much you can trust her um, how much you can trust her to be there for you and to lead you in ways that are going to bless you um, and help you do what you want to do. You know, when it comes to authenticity, sometimes we have to be willing to have authentic conversations with our leader too. 
you know, because real trust is formed there. So I know that you have space and the ability to do that with her. So I am rooting you guys on. I cannot wait to see you all in St. Louis. And I hope that if we're not friends on Instagram, you can find me there. I am on Facebook. I'm not super active there, though. Instagram is my, my jam. I'm an Instagram business coach. Um, I am doing courses consistently. I have a course that launches tomorrow night called Stories That Sell. Um, it's how to be able to sell and take your DMs from crickets to clients. Um, it starts tomorrow and it runs five days for the next week. It's really exciting. And I also have another course called Attract Authentically um, that starts on October the 10th. I'm sorry, August the 10th. I'm a couple months ahead of myself. It's really a way to help you show up as your authentic self to attract the people that God always meant for you to attract online. So there's a lot of heart set, a lot of mindset in both of those. I also do one-on-one -on -one coaching in addition to what I'm already doing with my team as well so if I can reach if I can help you with anything please don't hesitate to reach out to me I'm so proud of you guys and I cannot wait to see you all in St. Louis thank you Holly that was so good oh my gosh so and for my, those, that was amazing yes so who has got their ticket and their hotel and be ready for St. Louis and Julie's like I don't know what you're talking about but I will tell you <laughs> I'll tell you that tonight. Um, we have a conference twice a year and you just get so filled up. It's like being with 10,000 other people who are so excited about fruits and vegetables, sharing our mission and just working as a community together. It is so, you know, there's so much power in unity, so much power. One is good, but two is great. And three, you can't break right? <laughs> right. I love that so much. And Holly, you were quoting that scripture from second Timothy. God has not given me a spirit of fear, but of love, power, and a sound mind. I made a, a shirt with that, with the word oh. fearless years and years ago. I used to make shirts for all my fitness people. And I actually, God laid that scripture on my heart for my daughter who had struggled with anxiety. Mm -hmm. And I've never had anxiety, but it was horrible to see my child like that. And I know so many adults struggle with that um so I just love that you brought that up and reminded me that it's real I've seen it in action and it's something we have to fight head on yes do it afraid yes yes and there's so many wonderful tools out there so I do just want to encourage y'all she said I'm here for you guys I really am and Sarah darts I don't know you yet but I know um Allison's getting ready to have that baby any minute now so I'm here I can give you my phone number, whatever. Y'all can call me or Boxer or Facebook or Instagram, whatever. Anytime, anytime. And if something's, like if I do something, this is what I was afraid of. And I'm sorry I'm going out into it right, a little bit right now. But the thing that terrifies me is I'm going to say the wrong thing to come, that it'll come out wrong. You know what I mean? Like I'll be misunderstood because mm -hmm. I just say what I think. And a lot of times it's not right. It's not right. But I just pray that if I ever say something to any, any of y'all and you're not sure of what I meant, please message me. Please mm -hmm. call me something because I really do want to see each of you succeed. And if that means just getting it for you and your family, getting healthy, that's perfect and wonderful and if it's to make it to national marketing director that's perfect and wonderful and anywhere in between I just want everybody to feel loved and seen and I knew Holly would make that clear and you did such a beautiful job yeah. so thank you again thank and you if so you have time what'd you say thank you so much for having me oh my gosh when I met you I was like oh, I love this girl um can I get a picture do y'all mind me getting a little picture for my social media. I love to share life. Yeah, make a heart. Brandy's doing the heart. She taught me how to do it right because I think Elizabeth and I make circles. But yeah, you got to get your thumbs together. <laughs> Karen Ward, make a heart. <laughs> that was so good. All right, let me get my camera. Okay, one, two, three. And I always give cartoons for those that don't want to show their face. I get you. Sarah's got a baby nursing. Yeah, and Sarah Purdue. So maybe. <laughs> <laughs> other Sarah's tied up too but thank you guys so much love y'all so much and if you need help getting in touch with Holly let me know and I'll connect you this was priceless thank you yes thank you so much thank you thank you thank you bye thank y'all bye thanks Holly I'm gonna call you I mean Julie I'm gonna call you okay <laughs>